Well, we come now to some practical examples of vector addition. If uh, consider this diagram, a person in a boat is trying to row straight across the river from bank to bank, but the river current is uh, headed off to the right. We're going to end up with a total velocity or a net velocity on the red line. How do we uh, compute that? The meters per second and the angle. Well, it's a vector addition problem. We've got the velocity of the boat plus the velocity of the river. We have to go through the methods of vector addition. These two are not parallel, the velocity of the boat and velocity of the river. So we can't add them directly. Um, we'll have to use our, our techniques. Let's put some numbers on it. 0.75 meters per second for the velocity of the boat, 1.2 meters per second for the velocity of the river. To find the magnitude of the total velocity, we should recognize we have a right triangle that's been given to us uh, with the boat going directly across the river. That velocity is perpendicular to the river current direction. So we have a right triangle. We've given the two sides of the right triangle. It's an easy problem. We find the magnitude of the total velocity by using Pythagorean theorem, square root of 0.75 squared plus 1.2 squared. We square the short sides, add them up, take a square root. I came up with 1.42 meters per second. You should double check that. What about the angle? Well, a little bit, uh, just one step away from doing this. Here's theta described on the diagram. Theta is also up here. The river current direction and this little dotted line that's been put in here, those are parallel. We have a straight line cutting two parallel lines. Think about geometry. The angle up here is the same theta. So I'm going to use the theta up here and use inverse tangent. The opposite side is 0.75. The adjacent side is 1.2. We divide those two numbers. We take inverse tangent. I came up with 32 degrees. You should uh, check your work. And we've calculated velocity here not the displacement. If we would have uh, you know, 10 seconds of motion, we could calculate the uh, magnitude of the displacement, uh, rate times time, given a constant river current and constant rowing, and we'd have 14.2 meters at this same angle, 32 degrees. But the calculation I did here was the velocity. What about a plane flying through air and there's a wind that is uh, complicating the flight. The plane heads straight north, but there's a wind down here to the southwest, and the net, the addition of those two velocities, gives us a progress of the plane that's illustrated on this solid green line. Again, we have to use vector addition. This one's a little more complicated because we don't have a right triangle. Um, so how did I find the wind the components of the wind first and then reconstruct the wind vector. Well, given that the plane flies at 45 miles an hour straight north in still air, um, it's actually tracking at 38 meters per second, an angle of 20 degrees west of north. What's the speed and direction of the wind? So this uh, actual track across the ground, 38 meters per second, 110 degrees would be its official angle from the positive x-axis. So I found the x component of the total velocity is minus 13 meters per second. The y component of the total velocity is 35.7 meters per second. So let's uh, take a look at what the components of the velocity of the plane are in still air. Well, it's headed straight north. It's not going left or right. So the x component would be zero. The y component would be 45 meters per second. It's headed north. That's the y-axis. The wind is doing vector addition to the plane's components. So I write an x equation. The x component of the plane velocity plus the x component of the wind velocity equals this minus 13 meters per second that we computed up here, the x component of the total velocity. So x uh, for the plane is zero, so the velocity in the x direction for the wind is minus 13 meters per second. Slightly more complicated for y, but not a big deal. The y component of the plane's velocity plus the y component of the wind's velocity gives us 35.7. That was computed earlier, the component of the total velocity in the y direction. 
So we have uh, 45 meters per second for the y component of the plane. I subtract 45 from both sides. We find that the y component of the wind is minus 9.3. So we're getting a negative for both the x and the y. Does that agree with the sketch? You should always check your sketch and see if, uh, as you work things along, you're in agreement. It is agreeing because our wind velocity is to the left from the origin and down below the negative x-axis. It's in a negative y direction. So let's calculate the uh, reconstruct the wind vector. We know the short sides are minus 13 and minus 9.3. They get squared. The negative sign goes away. Negative times a negative produces a positive. We add these together, take a square root. I came up with 16 meters per second. You should double check that. The angle theta up here, so we would have an opposite side, that's the y component of the wind velocity, adjacent side, that is the x component of the wind velocity. So we do opposite divided by adjacent. Opposite is the minus 9.3, the y component. Adjacent is minus 13, the x component. We divide, then take inverse tangent, and we get 35.6 degrees. That's in this little triangle, and theta is the angle below the negative x-axis. Now this dark line here is the negative x-axis. Positive x-axis would be this way, and the y-axis running up and down here, north and south. So inside the triangle, this theta is 35.6 degrees. There's 180 degrees from the positive x-axis to the negative x-axis, and hopefully I've added correctly, 180 degrees plus the 35.6 below the x-axis. That would be 215.6 degrees away from the x-axis. That would be the mathematical answer. So those are some examples of vector addition. Um, again, giving us some practice with components and reconstructing vectors. You should do your own practicing and ask questions.